Hello everybody, here's the story that's about as shocking as sitting on a jar. Now, to be fair, I actually covered the story before, but just like Taylor Swift redoing her Christmas albums, I think I could do the story better this time around. Now, the story is about a country that you've never heard about. However, the Global Hunger Index had indicated that this country is the worst in the world for children. No, I'm not talking about North Korea or Syria or China or Russia. I'm talking about the Central African Republic. Now, about as sure as night turns to day and day burns all the white people, what we can say for sure is it's called the Central African African Republic because it is located in the center of Africa. So today we're going to read through a satanic laundry list of all of their problems to better understand how we can help the situation. And I don't mean help as in like air quotes help like Iraq. I mean help as in a non-psychopathic serial killer kind of way. So the topics that we're going to dive into deeper than Kim Kardashian did on Ray J include famine, scary hospitals, Mad Max styled militias, a homeless population that's honestly larger than anything you've probably ever heard about, history, obviously how the U.S. squeezed its willy into an unwarranted situation, and how Russia had snuck into the back. Now, if you're listening so far and I haven't made you cry thus far, it means I'm probably not doing my job, so I'm going to throw out a startling statistic. 1.5 million children are on the verge of starvation in the Central African Republic. And by on the verge, by the way, I had a troll be like, what dictates on the verge? It means if they go another week, they're going to die. Now, to repeat what I just said, in case some of y'all are actually slipping, I'm going to add a little bit more detail. So between 2018 Global Hunger Index and 2019, not 2020, by the way, because apparently they didn't have any information on that. <laughs> what we learned was that the Central African Republic was rated the worst in the world. Now, for those of you who are wondering, what exactly is the Global Hunger Index? What does it do? Well, it actually tracks the level of malnutrition like Chris Hansen tracks predators. For perspective, you'll find more food in the gutters of North Korea than you would in this place, just so you know. Now, allow me to actually humanize this bitch for all of y'all. One reason why this is one of the worst places in the world is because the U.S. has more McDonald's per block than this country has pediatric hospitals across the whole country. Now, this isn't a small country, by the way. It's over the size of Texas. And the number of pediatric hospitals they have is a combined total of well, one. Now, the pediatric hospital's name is Bangi, and I apologize if I butchered that like Jeffrey Dahmer, but essentially it's a single story building with 300 beds and one single ambulance. That means if more than one newborn has a serious emergency and a hospital is needed, specifically an ambulance, you better hope to God the ambulance is closer to you than the other person who needs it as well. Now, this country is so poor and overcrowded that it's common for as many as three sickly children to share a single bed, which by the way, that gives me anxiety because I have anxiety when somebody sits on my bed sheets, let alone sharing a hospital with two other people who are also sick. Meanwhile, in America, we all know somebody who gets all stressed out and has a mental breakdown whenever the Starbucks lady messes up their peppermint macchiato, okay? I think we can all agree on this, right? Let's all just <sighs> take a pause because the next story is gonna hit harder than a raccoon looking for coke. 75 to 80% of the country is lawless. And by lawless, what I mean is it's not governed by a sovereign state. Basically, imagine a band of rabid Karens taking over different swaths of land until they're mass murdered and then a different band of Karens go and take over that different pieces of land. And the government essentially controls the capital and that's more or less it. In terms of international perspective, there's UN peacekeepers, However, despite the fact there's 14,000 of them, they do kind of act like that friend that kind of wants to help out their friend who's throwing hands in a Walmart parking lot, but he doesn't really like to throw hands himself. And so he kind of posts up in the corner until someone pulls out a phone and he's like, oh shit, I actually have to do something now. So he kind of symbolically throws a couple punches and that's about it. It's pretty much what the UN is doing. They're not helping a whole lot, but they're there, if that counts for something. Side note, when I said a band of rabid Karens, what I actually mean is 14 different rebel groups that are controlling different types of territories in the Central African Republic. Also, for the record, I don't actually consider these rebel-controlled areas to be civil and maintain some sort of law and order. The reason actually is pretty simple. For once in life, there's actually a simple reason. It's because the humanitarian workers who oversee these types of regions, they're just mass murdered. So we have no idea what happens in these areas. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna go even further with this. I'm gonna say the humanitarian aid workers are targeted more than Britney Spears is from her dad. According to NBC, in 2018, there is 396 attacks against humanitarian aid workers, despite the fact there's only 365 days out of the year. Now look, I like a train run through me just as much as the next straight guy, but this seems a little bit excessive. 
Oh, also, just to kind of tickle your pickle here, they also target people of different religious orientations or different religious practices or beliefs, however you want to categorize that. So I don't really know if you are a humanitarian aid worker and also part of a different religion. I don't know if they just kill you twice or in hindsight, I suppose they probably just keep you for ransom, but that's aside the point. But I think you gain a perspective about what exactly is going on in this country. Okay, so the Central African Republic is an orgy of destruction going up in a fireball of flames, and I don't mean the fireball is in the type of alcohol. Nothing could possibly get any worse, right? Nah, son. Nah, we're about to go harder than some white chicks at Amigos concert up in here. Let's get into the number of displaced people. So more than a million people are displaced from war. This includes people who are internally displaced or externally displaced. The war has also claimed tens of thousands of lives. Here is why this statistic is a painful pinch to the side of you swallowing emotional trauma. There's about 4.7-ish million people in the country, which means about a fourth you know, about a fourth to a fifth, roughly, of the people in the country are either displaced or they're dead. Like, look, <laughs> I don't mean to be like a classic American. I definitely don't want to be like a classic capitalist here. But if I was given two options, like a McDonald's or something like that, I'd be pretty pissed. Really quick, I'm going to stop the program and let you guys know, if you don't feel bad about the millions of people that are dying, don't feel too bad because of the fact that there's something called psychic numbing. Now, what that is, is where you're you have an inability to be able to process that level of suffering. Your brain is incapable of doing that. You can process the level of suffering for one person or two or three, but the more people that are suffering, the harder it is to comprehend that level. So in order for us to better understand this situation, I'm going to paint a picture like the Bob Ross of death. The amount of people who are homeless and dead, one or the other, or eventually both, that is the number of people who live in Seattle and an additional 300,000. So that's the number of people who live in Seattle and 10 football stadiums worth of people who are dead. And yet nobody knows about this country. Now, if you're feeling as depressed as Kashi 69 probably did after his last album flop, don't worry, there's some good news in all of this story. But I have one last hard fact that's about as off-putting as the thought of Ted Cruz impregnating you. Sorry. I didn't mean to give you that visual, but now you have it. 2.9 million people are in need of humanitarian assistance. And other needs, 2.9 million people need about as much help as Kanye. So Christ on a cracker. How do we get here? What is going on? Where do we move forward? Because right now it feels like life is going in dry and hard and rocking us from the back and we're not really liking it, but our back is getting blown out regardless. But don't worry. Follow me on this next part. Let's go into the history. I'm not going to go too far into the history of the Central African Republic, but it is important to touch on a little bit of it. So it started as a slave trade area where it placed one group in power over another. Pretty standard stuff in this region. However, for our purposes, let's start between 2004 and 2007. There is a peace agreement after the Civil War in that particular time. However, there's this group called the Selica Muslims, which I probably butchered the holy bejesus out of that name, but the Selica Muslims believe that the government didn't respect the peace agreement, and then all the shit went down. In 2012, an armed coalition of Selica Muslims, primarily made up of, go figure, the country's Muslim minority, which is why they're called the Selica Muslims, they took the capital of Bangui and staged a coup in March 2003. However, in response, the Christians and these individuals called the animists, which animists are people who believe in like non-human entities and spiritual entities, kind of like the inner power of animals and plants and inanimate objects and believing that they all have a spiritual essence. And I apologize if you're an animist and I just destroyed your entire religion on accident there. But the Christians and the animists who call themselves the anti-Balakas began throwing more heat than a ginger's fist against the Selica Muslims. Subsequently, tons of people died, have been displaced. We know the whole story. So then the refugees are primarily Muslim who had fled to Cameroon and the Democratic Republic of Congo. Thus, here we are right now. Not everything in the story sucks. Sometimes it swallows, which at times can be a good thing. But there's a fascinating food that the... <laughs> I didn't mean to lead in with talking about food, by the way. There's a fascinating food that the United Nations is sponsoring and they're buying mass products of. It's called Plumpy Nut. It's a peanut butter on steroids. The food is about as needed as Jake Paul needs to catch more hands than Jeffrey Dahmer. It's a very important type of food. One bar, otherwise known as one pack, can keep a kid alive for an entire day. Now, the United Nations 
has given this to 25,500 kids who are on the brink of death. And by brink of death, I mean their organs are currently shutting down. Fortunately, 90% had recovered, which is absolutely amazing. With that said, if you would like to donate or share this information, I have more in the description box of This Is YouTube. Otherwise, you can look up UNICEF, Plumpy Nut, and call it good. On behalf of the kids, I can say thank you for giving a shit.